Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tommy and I'm a photographer from Melbourne. And today I wanna to share with you Nikon's new entry-level full-frame camera, the Nikon Z5. Now Nikon Australia recently sent out this camera to me to test out from home. And so what I did yesterday was I did a little food photo shoot and I'll show you how this went in the video. But first I wanna go over a few of the features that make the Nikon Z5 stand out. Firstly, I want to talk about the large Z mount. This is the largest mount for any compact mirrorless camera right now. A large mount also means that you're letting more light in, and this allows for sharper and brighter corners than before. You'll also notice less distortions and refractions with the large mount, and so your images will look more true to life. The autofocus capabilities of this camera is also top notch as well, and this is through Nikon's hybrid autofocus. Basically, hybrid autofocus is a combination of phase detection and contrast detection. And with the Nikon Z5, you also get eye detect autofocus and also animal eye detect autofocus. The Z5 has 273 autofocus points and 90% frame coverage. And also with subject tracking, you're unlikely to miss any shots with the Nikon Z5. Nikon Australia are also launching a new campaign this month to inspire people like me and you to expand our creative playground. Obviously with restrictions around COVID-19, it's really important that we keep our creative spirits high, but also we gotta be safe about it in the comfort of our own home. And as part of this, Nikon Australia are hosting a photography and videography competition as an opportunity for us to demonstrate playfulness and uniqueness through creativity. This food photo shoot that I'm doing is my entry to the playcation competition, and I'll be using the different areas around my house to use as my creative playground. And the reason why I chose to do a food photo shoot is because now is actually a perfect time to get better at your product and food photography. And recently the cherry blossoms have just started coming out in Melbourne and that sparked some ideas in me to do a Japanese and Korean styled food photo shoot. So I called up my favorite local Korean and Japanese restaurant and I told them that I was gonna do a food photo shoot with my order. They were super kind about it and they also gave me some of their bowls and plates to borrow for the styling of the shoot. My first step is to unpack all the food and plate it nicely on all the tableware. It's actually not as easy as it looks to make food look nice, so shout out to all the chefs and food stylists out there. I ordered two Korean dishes and two Japanese dishes, and my idea for the photo shoot is to have them styled in a similar way, whether them using cherry blossoms, but different kinds. I will also be using different backdrops for both of them so that they look kind of different. Speaking of backdrops, my second step is to style the set. So here I've got pink cherry blossoms, which I think are plum blossoms. And I'm gonna use this set for the Japanese dishes, which is the katsu curry and takoyaki. My first round of shooting will be on white marble and then I'll move on to white fabric. After shooting indoors for a while, I decided to move outdoors because I think I needed a tiny bit more light. I also changed the backdrop, so now I'm using a black tile, and now I'm shooting the Korean dishes with a different type of cherry blossom. And this is what my outdoor setup looks like. Yep, it's not the most professional setup, and obviously it's just in my front porch, but I think it just goes to show you that you don't need the most professional setup to get some good photos of food. It's more about what your layout is and how creative you can get within the scene. Also, don't mind the sandals, I was just too lazy to wear shoes. The main reason why I wanted to shoot outside was to get more natural light. Now, more natural light means that you can shoot at a faster aperture, which means you can get more depth of field, and also you can shoot at a lower ISO, which means you get a sharper, less grainy image. For the Korean dishes, my first one to shoot was the LA Galbi. Since the food was neatly laid out on a long board, I really wanted to emphasize the length of the board. I decided to line up the long cherry blossom branches with the board in a parallel way, so it creates the pattern and illusion of lines in the final image. For my second Korean dish, which is the bibimbap, 
I thought I wanted to do something different with the flowers. So what I actually decided to do was I removed the petals from the cherry blossom branches and I made them scatter all over the black tiles as if they had just fallen off. This made the shoot tons messier, so I was really glad that I chose to shoot outside. And one way to make your food photos a little bit more interesting is to have a bit of a foreground subject. This creates depth of field and what I did here was I put the cherry blossom branch really close to the lens and it created this depth of field effect. After shooting with the black tile, I decided to go back to the Japanese dishes and shoot them on the white tiles outside. Overall, I'm really happy with how these turned out and I think it's a great way to get creative with food photography. So what did you think of the photos? Those were all taken on the Nikon Z5 with the 24 to 50 millimeter lens. And I can say that it's a really good camera for entry level photographers. After all, at the end of the day, you do get to make the most of the full frame sensor. And I noticed that when I was shooting, I used a lot of the hybrid autofocus and also the image stabilization really helped as well. Since I was using the lower shutter speed, I was still able to get some really crispy shots using the five axis image stabilization. I also think that the LCD screen is super nice to use as well. It's a massive screen and it gets really bright so it's really easy to see even if you're outdoors and also it's quite large for an LCD screen so you really get to see more of your image. Also when I was processing the photos I didn't notice many distortion or vignetting in the corners and that's all thanks to the large Z mount sensor. Like with many other Nikon cameras it's also really well built so it's got that magnesium finish so you know it's durable and it's also weather sealed as well so it'd be good in any condition. And for a lot of mirrorless shooters, size is definitely a factor. And when I was shooting with this camera, I noticed that it was very lightweight in this combination. And also I was able to do stuff freely just using this camera in one hand. And so if you're just starting out in photography and you're looking for a versatile kit, I recommend you to try the Nikon Z5 because it's a super versatile body. And also, as you might know, Nikon have a wide variety of lenses you can choose from as well, including the 24 to 50 lens. Also, if you're an Australian creator, don't forget to check out Nikon Australia's Playcation Challenge. This is a great opportunity to showcase your unique and playful creative abilities while still being in your own home. I'll have the link in the description below. And that's it for this video. Hopefully this helps you consider the Nikon Z5. And if you did like this video and the photos, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below what kind of video you'd like to see next. For more videos from me, please hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.